Hey guys, Shadefire here with episode 1 of Let's Play Alice, Madness Returns. Sequel to, uh, American McGee's Alice. This of course came out this year, for, uh, surprisingly, PC and consoles. So, uh, yeah. I mean, those of you who watched the first impressions video I did, already know how this is all gonna go. But if you're new here, well, welcome. We're gonna start over from the beginning, of course. Uh, don't wanna jump ahead or anything. Now, I'm thinking we play on hard this time. Mainly because this game is a lot more playable than uh, Alice was. And because I'm feeling confident, so uh, we're going to play on hard. Turn up gamma. This is probably not even going to affect anything in the video. It'll still look pitch black. No, we're not going to invert it because nobody plays like that. And uh, I'm just going to shut up for the cutscene. If it loads. I can guarantee the rest of the load times aren't going to be this long. Hopefully. If they are, I can just cut them out. Come now, Alice. It's only a dream. It's not a dream. It, it's a memory. And it makes me sick. Now, focus. Wait. You're floating again. Weightless. A cipher. Relax. Fire! Uh, I'm in hell! Forget it. Abandon that memory. It's unproductive. Go to Wonderland. Sergeant, this girl's badly burned. Call for a doctor! She'll be alright. No, Alice. Discard that delusion. Forget it. Go to Wonderland. I'd rather not, Doctor. My Wonderland's shattered. It's dead to me. Your preference doesn't signify, girl. Now, Alice, where are you? I'm sailing with a friend. Hmm. It's different somehow. Things have changed. Change is good. It's the first link in the chain of forgetting. What's happening? Are you mad? I'm not mad. Rabbit. That's not right. What's he doing? Is something wrong? Something wrong? Robert! Oh no! Not that! Don't struggle, Alice. Let the new Wonderland emerge. Corruption? It's killing me! Wonderland is destroyed! My mind is in ruins! Forget it, Alice. Block that dream. Wake at the sound. There, Alice. Better now, aren't we? My head's exploded and there's a steam hammer in my chest. Yes, well, the cost of forgetting is high. My memories make me vomit. What can I... Remember other things. I want to forget. Who would choose to be alone, imprisoned by their broken memories? I'll set you free, Alice. Memory is a curse more often than a blessing. So you've said many times, and... And I will say again, the past must be paid for. Now, before our next session, collect those pills from our high street chemist. Very well, Doctor. It's my turn to forget, Alice. Now, Charlie. Your pa was hung for killing your ma who beat you. Let's forget that, shall we? The past is dead, Charlie. So here we are, in the, uh... Orphanage slash psychiatrist's office. Alice kind of has a uh, dress that resembles her iconic one, but without any color. Ollie pinched me smalls. Wear bloomers. 
Uh, I gotta be careful with that camera. It's pretty uh, nauseatingly fast. Doctor, do you right? Still sick in the head? I'm past a cure. Terminal condition. So for those of you unfamiliar with the uh, first game, Alice was sent into a crazy coma after the death of her parents in a fire and had to rebuild her destroyed wonderland throughout the course of the first game after dealing with her fears of the Jabberwocky that represented her uh, fear of fire that killed her parents and squared things up with the, the Queen of Hearts slash Red Queen and now she's out of the coma but she's still fucking crazy And is presumably living with this psychiatrist guy to try to deal with it. Well, that's a pleasant message for the orphans. Mr. Payne had no idea how humble a home could be. If not for my drawings and the photographs, this could pass for my room at the asylum. You mean your room at the asylum didn't have a bunch of crazy people drawings? So, uh, I forgot to mention that this is pretty much a blind run. I mean, I have played through about the first 45 minutes or so. But after that, it's going to be all new sailing. Another day, a different dream, perhaps. Here we are in a uh, shitty industrial London, industrial age. Oh, this digging's killing me, back. I call work noble, the bastards. Can't come this way, love. Uh, go round. I know I mentioned it before, but this is still weird nice that side you could build a flat on it. Alice is mostly the only person with, you know, human proportions. I mean, she's still kind of weird looking, but less than these mutant children. You like Boccherini, Missy? How about Paganini? I guess I gotta try to talk to everybody. She ever work? Where's her flat? Too good for company? She don't get close. Hates being touched. Who likes it then? Never slap, spite, or like. This child gives no fuck, she just shoves me out of the way. That's the creepy kid again. So hush, you little ones, and have no fear. The man in the moon, he is the engineer. I wonder if that's from something. Probably. <laughs> Follow the white cabot. <laughs> Hang off, Missy. Move long. What is she selling? Potatoes? It's a shilling over the odds, maybe. You must be bleeding joking, mate. I can't afford to put cheese on the table anymore. Sometimes Who is I saying that? Where my next cheese is coming from. Sick of the Hello, puss. Puss, 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 puss. Don't be afraid. I like how they just slap that, uh, press space to skip as if they're expecting you to skip the cutscenes. That'll teach him. Beat him good. Move along, Alice. I can run you in just for being off your nut. Well, I say, that's not very polite. Theophilius Everett Horton, clockmaker. Moth ointment, man's ear. Hmm. 
Now, where has that cat gone? Oh, yes, this is where they keep the skulls. Wait up, cat. Oh, God, the prostitutes are the worst. Like a real job, no changing nappies. Better than being a dog's body for orphan, you can make someone happy. Save the world, ten minutes at a time. They must not be doing good business if they're that skinny. Can I steal this cup? Excuse me, sir. You look like a discerning gent. From what I played before, it seems like Alice doesn't have much. Doesn't have much in the way of interaction with the world when you're in, uh, you know, reality. Seems following furry creatures into dark holes has become a habit. I hope it's not a vice. Of course, Alice still manages to be snarky despite being crazy. Stars and garters, Alice Little. Slumming again, are we? Nurse Witless. What luck. Twice in as many months. Out on your own? You look frazzled, dearie. Not doing well? Not really. Come along home then and look at my pigeons. Pretty birds. Like you. I don't think so. Our last visit cost me several pounds and got me nowhere. I might recall where your mangy rabbit got to. I don't really see why Alice is still afraid of the Jabberwocky after no surprise. she blew her it up. Her roasted like chestnuts right before her eyes. Ten years in Rutledge Asylum wasted everyone's time. Dr. Bumby won't do better. Still hauling out her questions. The fire, her memory. I deserve consideration, don't I? Who found her her new clothes? Who got her a place at Bombay's? Where'd she be without me? On the street, selling her backside. Like some pigeons, though. She's doled out the odd pound or two. But what I know is worth more than that. Kept her secret, haven't I? Heard her say, all died on my account. I couldn't save you. I've told her my silence is for sale. Cheap. I'm a good sort, really. Not like her nanny, that uppity whore. Or that lawyer fellow Radcliffe took her stupid rabbit. Need money. Warned her I'd tell the coppers if she didn't make a donation to my upkeep. She yells and goes off her head. Does she kinda remember her name? What I heard. So not only is she crazy, but she's getting extorted by an old lady. The wonderful industrial skyline. Smoke as far as the eye can see. Nurse Witless, do you mean to harm me? To send me back to the asylum? I won't say no. I've a first you could photograph. Need a drink. Your malice on its weapon.
Here we are in Wonderland, and it already looks better than it did the first time we dropped in. At the beginning of American McGee's Alice. Very upsetting journey, but I'm rid of Pris, or whatever she's become. At least the place I've landed is somewhat familiar. About time, too, Alice. Blasted cat. Don't try to bully me. I'm very much on edge. Perfect. When you're not on edge, you're taking up too much space. You're no help at all. But you know I can be. I'll frighten myself. When necessary, thanks very much. I was hoping to escape from all that. Abandon that hope. A new law reigns in this wonderland, Alice. It's very rough justice all round. We're at risk here. You be on your guard. You know, I don't like the uh, new voice for the Cheshire. They should have just kept the old one. It sounds a bit too much like whoever it is is trying to emulate the original one, without sounding enough like them to be able to. So Wonderland's a pretty nice looking place. Of course, that might have something to do with the uh, amount of time that's passed since the original game came out. With that frog, Alice, I swear, you jump so well. Also, this game seems to be littered with collectibles. Nail and marble. And already we can see that Alice is a lot more uh, athletic, I guess, than she was in the first game with the double jump. And then, yeah, you can twirl. I find that the movement in this is a lot better than the original game, because you don't have the cursor that kind of centers where you're moving towards. It plays a lot more like a third-person game should. Whereas the first game was a bit more of a third-person shooter in disguise. If you leave from that table again, Alice, I'll expire. You're two times too reckless, my girl. Bounce pads. Still gotta have those in Wonderland. Or any platforming game. Amanita muscaria, Alice, is merely a stinky toadstool. A spongy consistency, but poisonous. So we're too big to fit through here, even though Alice could clearly just duck her head and walk through. Luckily, size is not a constant in Wonderland, and it'll be easy to change. I've been down this road before. Good things in small packages? Though lacking a bathing costume, a plunge in that pool is in order. My god! I'm shrinking in this potion! Sh shall I disappear? Almost. But the upside is that while smaller, you can see things that are nearly invisible to your bigger self. Ah, I get it, quite. Forests for the trees, just the other way round. Short-sighted is more than a matter of perspective. So unlike the first game where we had to spend a bunch of time trying to get a shrinking potion so that we could follow the white rabbit, now we can do it on demand. And the whole being able to see things when shrunk that you couldn't see before thing doesn't really make sense because, like, it's neon messages on the wall. Like, you should be able to see those just fine as Big Alice, but you can't. Look how small she's become, all curled up. She's barely there, a vixen in her hidey hole. So I should point out since this is a blind run, it's not really going to be a 100% run. I might find all the collectibles, but it's probably pretty unlikely that I'll find them all. But I'll try. There's our uh, currency of sort for the game, teeth. We'll be using that later to upgrade stuff. That snail is also a tree. I wonder if the tree moves around with the snail, or the snail's just been there for that long. Hey. 
Where does this lead? Did I find a secret or did I go the wrong way? Now I have to run back and check to make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, no. I guess if I missed anything, it's too late. You guys can feel free to uh, point out in the comments if you actually played this game, since I know it's been a while since it came out now, if I missed anything. Because I'm curious to know. Super Bounce Pad! God, it's one of those slides from Mario 64. These things were terrible. At least this one has railings to keep you from flying off the edge. Golden teeth are worth five, I believe. tells me that's not a river of wine. Now that's a familiar corpse. Of course that's the Jabberwocky, or what's left of him. You can see all the mechanical the parts still. The powerful blade is swift and keen and always ready for service. I've not come back here looking for a fight. Really? That's a pity. One's certainly looking for you. So we got back our Vorpal Blade from the first game. Except now we don't have to throw it. We just straight up stab people. In a much more Devil May Cry-esque... Well, I wouldn't say Devil May Cry, it's not that complicated. Fight fight but that sort of action but flight often combat. Putting off the fight to another day. Choose your battles wisely, Alice. This is pretty much going to be our main weapon for the entire game, I'm guessing. As we upgrade it and stuff. And of course, instead of breaking pots and boxes, we're breaking snail shells. But really the same concept. Elf doesn't look too happy there. Elf doesn't ever look happy. But I guess you wouldn't either if you were crazy. Oh no, goo babies. Nothing worse than goo babies. Caps lock. So here we've got our uh, Zelda style Z targeting. These guys aren't very tough. Gross and evil in a single monstrosity. So far I'm a little disappointed with those guys just because there seems to be a lot of them in the f at least at the beginning here cuz they um they're not really that creepy overall and they remind me a lot of those mask spiders from the first game that were just a bunch of legs with doll masks on them but a flower's purpose is simple and immutable human purpose is fickle because it is a slave to memory memories must be strictly managed Alice unproductive ones must be eliminated Here's our fancy platforming tutorial. Essentially, in addition to a triple jump, you have the ability to glide afterwards by holding down the jump. Making Alice a lot more capable at not falling to her death than she was in the first game. Where you could only jump once, and you'd usually fall to your death anyway.
Though the the falling death to your death mechanic was really weird in the first game because sometimes you die and sometimes you just teleport back up. But it was kind of inconsistent as to when. If I remember correctly, this game is you never die die from falling off. It just sends you back to checkpoint. But I'm sure that's part of the result of games becoming easier since the original was made. Oh no! Well, we're gonna find out right now what happens when you fall. Oh look, it put me up here. How convenient. This is also one of the reasons why I wanted to play on hard, because the... making the game easier might have made it a little bit too easy, so... I was hoping there'd still be a little bit of challenge. I'm sure I'll be regretting that, you know, ten episodes from now when I'm getting my ass kicked, but whatever. And here is, uh... the Duchess, one of the bosses ah, from the first game. It's you again, Alice. You may approach. Why would I do that? You want to eat me? Yes, well, you taught me manners. And I've lost my taste for mad women. Strictly a poor sign diet for me. Everything's better with bacon, don't you agree? Of course you do. Now, there are pig snouts scattered about. I heard a few behind the house. Go fetch them for me. But take care for the pests that block your way. Pepper them up if they do. They need spice. And you're just the dish, a girl, to season them for me. You'll find that grinder serviceable. Why not season your own pig parts? Matter of priorities. My alabaster skin needs protection from the disgusting creatures running amok amidst the environs. But one gets peckish. Look, all you have to do is listen for the oink, then shoot the snout. You may like the results. I certainly will. So here we get our second weapon. And our kind of main uh, ranged weapon as far as I can tell. It's unlimited, but it seems to overheat if you grind too much pepper. So basically, left mouse to melee, right mouse to things are pretty easy, but I can see how they get annoying later in the game. They're fighting a bunch of other stuff at the same time. You can either caps lock or free aim, but I find caps lock is easier with the grinder. You can fight these guys with melee too, but if you take more than a second, they'll stick to you. And I already broke my caps lock. Anyway. There's some insidious ruins coming in. See, they don't even attack very much. And you can interrupt them by hitting them. And there's our first pig snout. This game is loaded absolutely with collectibles, because here's another one. Pig snouts will lead you to, usually, uh, treasure troves of teeth, and bottles and other collectibles. It's pretty much a collectible that will give you collectibles. But this one's uh, mandatory. Loaded it up with pepper, and he shows us the way. Don't want to miss any of those teeth shells. And now we get Thank our basket of goodies. Thank you so much for the snout. Now go away. 
Duchess, of course, has no manners as usual. But here we go, we get our reward, Golden Teeth. And we proceed on our way. And, uh, with that out of the way, I think we're going to call it here for the first episode of Let's Play American McGee's... Damn it. I always mix those two up. Let's Play Alice Madness Returns. There's no American McGee in the title anymore. I've been Shadefire, and I will see you guys in the following episodes. Look at those hair physics. Those hair physics are amazing. See you guys.